Omaha's news leader, chronicling the stories and people making a difference in our community. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. A candlelight vigil just days ago on the UNO campus remembered the people lost to drug abuse. Seven years ago, my son was a student at UNO and decided to, t to take oxycodone and went to sleep and didn't wake up in the dorms here at, on campus. I thought it was important for me to be here to speak so that people realize how far-reaching making that choice to take a drug is and, um, you know, that it affects your families, your friends, all kinds of people in your life. It's not just affecting you, so. And the numbers are staggering. 2.5 million Americans are addicted to opioids. About 17 million Americans have alcohol use disorder, according to the American Institute on Alcohol Abuse. That means they lack the ability to stop drinking despite the consequences. Well, those consequences include losing your family, your livelihood, and your life. Good morning, I'm Julie Cornell. This is National Recovery Month. Now this morning, we're gonna meet two Omaha men who've made it their personal mission to help people find clarity and a new way of life through sobriety. They're actually part of the growing business of sobriety, offering coaching and recovering support. And there's a reason. 90% of addicts who try to quit opioids on their own relapse. They simply need more help and support. And many times it involves prescription medication. We start with an outpatient treatment program finding success in Midtown Omaha. Strolling through Midtown Omaha, he shares his story. Because I did inpatient. I did 90 day intensive outpatient. I did the hydrotherapy, uh, herbalistic stuff. Jeremy Miller lived with life-threatening alcoholism. He says he tried everything to quit drinking. I was as desperate as could be. If I had owned a gun, I wouldn't be here. He dealt with social anxiety and growing pains as a kid. As long as we got each other. Jeremy was the child actor playing the youngest son, Ben, in the 80s television sitcom Growing Pains. But as an adult, he says his brain was hijacked by a life-threatening alcohol addiction. Cravings for booze flooded his brain. It was just that constant bombardment of, I need, I need, when's my next drink? A few years ago, Jeremy found a treatment now being offered in Omaha by a program called I Got Sober. I, I felt like I had my brain back. I mean, that's really, I felt like I could actually think a, a coherent thought. The Omaha program is finding success treating opioid and alcohol addiction. They use a combination of this time-release implant medicine called naltrexone, behavior therapy, and recovery coaching. Uh, the drug is a time-release pellet. It's been around for decades in other forms, and doctors say it blocks cravings in the brain, so alcohol and opioids have no effect on the body. When I received the implant, it was like someone flicked off the light switch. That's the best way I've ever been able to put it. The cravings just weren't there. There was no medicated feeling. I didn't feel drugged up. It was nothing like that. Omaha Family Practice Dr. Maman Ali does a simple outpatient procedure, placing the medicine under the skin near the belly button, where it's absorbed for months. How soon after the implant do people start feeling the effects? You know, it's immediate. As soon as one week after the therapy, as soon as we have the patient just come in for checkup. Creighton Prep alum Leo Allison went through this treatment more than six years ago. Now he runs I Got Sober as a recovery coach. Because they want kind of what you have, not in an ego sense, but in the fact that you have been where they are, you have recovered, and they want you to help them along the way. He sells now Trexone stops the drug and alcohol cravings so that around the table, behavior therapy and coaching can finally take hold. Omaha native Tom Welch is VP of operations and has 40 of these treatment centers across the country. The outpatient program lasts 12 months. Our program lasts a full year because behavioral changes don't happen in 30 days. They don't happen in 60 days. It, it takes time. So what's the biggest challenge you've had so far? With now, six years sober, Jeremy is back to acting again, making movies and working as a peer support specialist for the program that he says rescued him. Exactly. I am living a, a, a more joyful, happy life and free for once in my life than I've ever had. 
What more could you ask for, right? The program is outpatient so that you can keep working and going about your daily routine. It's about half the cost of the average 30-day inpatient treatment program. And there is financing available. You can go to igotsober.com for more information. And Leo Allison is with us here today. He opened the recovery center. It's been almost two years now, right? Two years, yep. This concept of, of addict helping addict, does it work? I think it probably works the best, not only on its own, but in a, in a multi-component program. Mm -hmm. Because when you're looking into the eyes of somebody that has been exactly where you are, you're living proof. You're living proof that what they want to do can be done. And in addition to that, there are so many uh, escape hatches and obstacles and delusional excuses that we give. You probably know it all. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was a pro, right, yeah. I mean, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And we don't really realize we're doing it, but we are. And those are, they're throwing up reasons to ourselves why we can't recover. And when somebody has been there and done that, we call them out and all of a sudden a light goes on. They never wow. thought of you know, this in a certain way or they didn't realize mm -hmm. that this was perpetuate, perpetuating and deepening you know, their condition. Right. So there's, just, there's nothing like uh, that sort of work, you know, one alcoholic or one addict to another, because it, 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 there's nothing really that doesn't work for an individual that's right, committed. Right, right. Sometimes it takes many stops and starts, and we hear this, oh, they've been through treatment already, this didn't work, they tried this, they tried that, even Jeremy said the mm. same thing. This, this seems to work because it, it combines different components. Yes, uh, and that's the, probably the biggest difference between our program and what is called kind of big recovery, right. the typical 30-day inpatient but treatments. But this naltrexone, mm -hmm. is, it's, it's a tool that, that really turns a switch off. Yeah, we call it the foundation of our program. Okay. And uh, the heart and soul of the program is what you mentioned, the recovery coaching, sure. the therapy, and then the peer support. But it is a, a foundation that seems to work mm -hmm. better than anything else out there in those early months of recovery, which are the most critical. How do you get clients to follow through like the full spectrum of the program though? I mean, they, there, there gotta be some people out there who think, oh, I'm just gonna go get that implant and then I'll be good. Mm -hmm. Then I can just go about my life. Well, in the initial consultation, believe me, I hammer home at that because mm -hmm. that, that will lead to relapse. You know, okay. I would say 99% of the time that when people come in or call and they want, you know, how much for just the implant? You know, wow. Every once in a while, we will make an exception if they're already engaged and immersed sure. in a program and they just need this, you know, this tool or this additional assistance to sure. maybe help them see it through. But it's all about, you know, the work, quote unquote, in, right. re in recovery. Because you have to change your mindset and whatever got into, in, you into that situation, right? Yeah. 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 Um, I know that people are impatient and they say, oh man, a year, what, you know, can we do it in six months? Can we do it in 12 weeks? Are, are you more flexible with that now that, you, that you've sort of um, been doing this for two years and you're kind of seeing what the client wants? Absolutely. We, we did start out as a full year program and I still recommend that to anybody because the number one indicator of a successful recovery is the amount of time in treatment. Sure. But there, there's a full spectrum, you know, in the nature of alcoholism and addiction, same thing. Some people have, maybe they're just coming back from an inpatient and they're going to piggyback our program with okay. this. Or they may not be as severe. And, you know, we'll do a real thorough, you know, consultation and investigation process to make sure that we feel right about offering a shorter term program. And we can't lose sight of the fact that cost enters it. Right. That, that's the nature of it. And let's talk about it. What, what kind of cost are we talking about here? The, uh, the three-month program now probably is around 6500 somewhere in there, and okay. then it ranges for the full year program up to about 15000 And Leo, do you see insurance eventually covering this? I do. BioCorex, the manufacturer of the implant and the developer of the program mm -hmm. right now, is working with the FDA on the fast track program to okay. get it approved. I mean, they're they're jumping through all the you know right. all the all the hoops and. Does insurance cover the does Suboxone and buprenorphine? Yes, they do. Yes. So this is just which are highly addictive right. drugs. Okay, yes. right, and this is just this is another tool that can help, and I got to see that that's going to be on the horizon. Yes, I'm I'm very confident that will be. Now, Trexone in the oral form is covered, but because it's a compounded oh, okay. implant. And there are some there are some additional issues that they have sure. to uh, prove to the FDA that won't come into play. So that's that's really the only difference. But that's the biggest difference maker with naltrexone. Okay. Is is it being an implant form rather sure. than oral? Sure. Sure. Yeah. 
How does someone know, and we only have a little bit of time left here, but how does someone know that they're ready for treatment? They say the right things, unprompted. I mean, they'll usually have a look in their eye and they will come in and they'll say, I'm done. I can't stop. I don't know how, what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go. All I know is I'm done. Please help. And, and that's where you have to be. And some people give lip service to that or right. say that they are, but they're really not. Right. You kind of, having gone through it, you know and you can feel on kind of on a vibrational frequency level, right. this guy's ready. He's absolutely ready. Some people can be uh, have an awakening during a consultation or, 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 or you know, a few subsequent meetings right. where the light will go on. But if somebody's ready, they're you know, going to do it. And yeah. they need help along the way. Thanks, Leo. Yeah. Stay here. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to check in with how uh, time at the gym helped one addict find new hope and purpose in life. And now he's helping others stay sober. You're watching KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. This is KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle, and today we've been talking about addiction and recovery, and we've shown you over the years the lure of prescription painkillers, and it can be nearly irresistible for some people. But one drug addict found a healthy fix, fitness. Now, as KETV Newswatch 7's Camilla Ortiz shows us, he's helping others stay on track. Take your shoulder blades and pull them all the way back. 41-year-old Aaron Barnes is here at his gym a lot, working out six days a week beneath the words he lives by. I feel like I can be my best. He didn't always feel that way. Barnes is a recovering addict, becoming dependent on oxycodone three years ago. I was you know, doing 10 to 20 pills a day. I could not function without it. I was in bed for days at a time. Straining relationships with his family, his son, it was his parents who convinced him to check into rehab back in 2015, and Barnes says he found his purpose within those 60 days. I had an amazing support system. I had my family waiting for me, my gym family. I had a lot of support when I get home, but unfortunately, a lot of people that come out of rehab, they don't have that support system waiting for them. That's why Barnes started his sober coaching business, offering recovery services to addicts both before and after detox. Sometimes we forget just how to live, you know, uh, how to just do day-to-day -day, uh, functions. And after figuring that out for himself, Barnes went a little further pouring the rest of his heart into fitness. It surrounds you in a positive, healthy environment. You know what I mean? And everyone here is, you know, they care about their health, their, their physique, their, their upbeat, their, their pushing themselves. A living before and after that started with asking for help. Please just have the courage to ask for help. There is life after addiction. And it takes a lot of courage to ask for help. Aaron's life after addiction is his sober coaching recovery business. And Aaron joins us now along with Leo Allison, co-founder of I Got Sober. And you guys are actually uh, collaborating now. You're working together. You're doing the coaching for Leo's clients, right? Yes, I am. The recovery coaching part right. of the program I handle for Leo. Right. Yes. How's that going? Do you love what you do? Yeah, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very passionate about recovery. So, yes, I absolutely love what I do. It's my life purpose, I have no doubt. Right. So every day I get to, in my career is my life purpose. How many lives have you touched over the last year, would you say? Yeah, hundreds. I mean, obviously, whether it's groups, mm -hmm. I've worked with rehab centers, tons of individuals, so hundreds of people along the way. And when people come to you, where are they in their journey? Can you be at a different place? Definitely. Uh, some individuals are fresh out of rehab. Some okay. individuals are just at their wit's end. They don't know what to do. They're just reaching out for any help. Uh, some individuals have been to rehab. I've worked with seven times so they're really, they're, you, you, everyone's at a different you know, point in their recovery. So I just kind of meet them at where they're at. Right. And then there's some flexibility too in how often you meet them. Like I know you said you meet with one client for two hours a day because they need that much support. Oh, and definitely there are some clients I, I live with 24 hours a day as a sober companion. So every, and there's clients I meet with once a week. There's some okay. I meet with once a month. So every client is unique. It just depends on the level of care, uh, their commitment level, right. uh, things like that. Right. How important is food and fitness to you? Now, I look at you and I say, you know, maybe someone would be intimidated. They, they might say, man, I can't look like Aaron. I'm not going to, I can't be coached by him. He'll push me too hard. Mm. I can't look like that. What would you say? <laughs> well, what everyone's pathway is a little different. Right. I, mean, I, I obviously love fitness. Right. I think there are endless benefits to fitness in the recovery process. Mm -hmm. So 
you don't even have to lift weights every day. Two to three times a week is more than enough. It's right. just about being active. I look forward to, I'm a, I thrive in routines in my recovery. So okay. every day I go at the same time and I work out. I look forward to that in my day. Right. And then when I leave there, I'm, I, I feel good. I, I've been motivated by others in the gym. And, and I, I have a feeling of, of self-pride that, you know, right. I set out for a goal and I accomplished it. Leo, would you say that self-care is super important in, in this recovery journey? It's as primary as anything. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, and we talked about um, exercise and how often you need to do it um, in recovery. Is twice a week? Yeah, I think two to three times is, is plenty. Uh, it also revolves how much time do you have. You know, there are things that, you know, life happens. People have children, they have jobs, they have schedules they have to adhere to. But right. two to three times a week, but there's always time. One of the things I'll, I'll say is I... Uh, we always had time to drink and use, right? There was always time for drugs and alcohol when you were an addict. Well, so I know that there's always time. Well, for there drugs. has to be something healthy to take its yeah. place now. Yeah. Um, talk about the isolation of addiction and what is the opposite of that? I know we've had this conversation before. It is. It's human connection. Uh, uh, addicts connecting with other addicts or just other humans. There's, there's a lot of support out there for people whenever you're trying to overcome uh, some challenges in your life or things you struggle with. So when you're an addict, you often isolate into alone and you're alone in, in darkness and, and you just don't want to be around people in fear of judgment, mm -hmm. uh, your, your self-worth, it, there's a lot of shame. So you start to distance yourself from other humans in places there because you just don't want to be around people. In recovery, the opposite of that is putting yourself out there, going to places where uh, there are other people where that, that are healthy, uh, that, that can support you, that you can talk to, that you can share your experience with. So literally the opposite of addiction is, is um, support from others right. and, and, and human connection. It's got to be really difficult, too, to, um, to coach people through this. I mean, you have to dig pretty deep into some issues in their lives or you'll never solve this this addiction right yeah, true I, absolutely the answering the why question is what i call it uh, in the beginning part of my coaching i help people understand why they were even doing drugs and alcohol to begin with mm -hmm. you you really can't out exercise addiction or out um, um, you can't go to meetings every day. It's not going to make it go away. It's not. Yeah. You have to realize why you were doing it to begin with. What is the underlying cause that even brought us to this point? Mm -hmm. Once we uncover the, the why, why were they doing it? Why were they trying to escape by using drugs and alcohol? Mm -hmm. Then we're able to maybe change our perspective about that why. Maybe what right. you thought about the reason you were trying to escape might not be true, or maybe if you look at it differently or, or, or something like that, then the second part of that is to create a healthy, active lifestyle where your sobriety can thrive. Right. How do you know when someone is ready to sort of graduate from from coaching? Yeah, you, you, like Leo kind of touched on, it. you really can tell. They start to say certain things and certain actions have been put in place where you can say, yep, that sounds like recovery. Knowing what recovery looks and feels like, when someone starts to say, hey, this is happening in my day, or I'm starting to have these experiences or these relationships back, or I'm starting to feel this way, et cetera, sleep, everything start, you can start to hear certain things, mm -hmm. and there's a twinkle in there. I hate, I hate to be you, but <laughs> Starry, a, yeah, you, yeah, you can just start to say they're kind of like yeah. nervous energy. They're like, right. hey, I'm, I'm really sober. I'm really right. doing this, and, you, right. and then you start to know we're, we're, we're working in the right direction. Why do both of you do this? Because I know that you could say, all right, I'm good now. I have my life back. I can just go on. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to help anybody. I can just, this could just be about me. Why have you made it about others? Uh, I always want to help people come to the other side of the veil. I know how good sober life is. And so I'm always constantly pushing myself to hopefully inspire others to do the same. I think I'm a lead by example kind of coach mm -hmm. where I say, hey, if I can do it, so can you. And I will right. never ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do either. I also like to share experiences that I see with peop uh, various clients I work with. I'll see something working for them or maybe uh, a, a, a new practice that they put in their life. And then I'm able to share that okay. anonymously with okay. other sure. clients and say, hey, this is working for them. And they may have a similar background or they may come from a similar upbringing or they may have similar views or beliefs. And I go, hey, this, you know, or, or sometimes I even connect my clients if they're open to that. Sure. They say, hey, I'm okay with doing that. I've actually connected clients and it has been extremely wow. helpful because then they're able to connect on a deeper level that I right. may not understand. They it may might have be been a sort of a mentoring relationship. Absolutely. Then, yeah. Addicts helping addicts. Right. Leo, why do you do it? I can't not do it. <laughs> really? It's as simple as that. I mean, there's the, the decision was uh, in a way made for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just know. Mm -hmm. There's So I can't not do it. What would you say to someone who's who's 
it's got it's on their list it's on their list september's the new january i got to do something about this yeah. what, how would you encourage them to, to reach out when you're ready to get help you will everyone reaches a point where they call it the bottom mm -hmm. but everyone has a different version of their bottom it, it when you're ready to get help ask for help there are resources out there there uh, there are programs out there like I Got Sober. There are people out there that truly have dedicated mm -hmm. their life to helping other addicts break the cycle of addiction. Right. So there is help. You just have to have the courage to ask for it. Um, does, is coaching covered by insurance at all? What kind of fees are we talking about for that? Currently, it is not. Okay. However, uh, I have heard some rumblings that there are some insurance companies that are definitely taking a look at peer support and recovery okay. coaching Good. because it's quickly becoming well-known fact that it is an effective form of treatment. Addicts helping addicts, like right. I said, they're saying, hey, there's something here. There's more and more case studies are coming out and more measurables are coming out that says this is really an effective way to, to help addicts break the cycle of addiction. Very good. Thank you both for joining us. Thank I'm you. so glad to have met you and share news about your, your programs. Thank you Thanks for really. having us. Yeah. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll be right back with some final thoughts. First, though, your comments are an important part of the show. We received several messages after last week's show on the region's rich railroad history. Barb Naughton wrote, good for you, Rob McCartney, for knowing and appreciating Omaha history. Great chronicle this morning. Kate Norton agreed. She says she never misses a Sunday morning program. She has to say that this week's edition in Omaha and the history of the fair was exceptional. Keep up the good work. If you have a thought about today's show, you can email it to news at KETV.com. We'll be right back. You've been watching KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. We've taken an in-depth look at addiction and recovery this morning. And we wrap it up with an invitation to join in the Hands Across the Bridge for Recovery event. It's Saturday, September 15th from 9 to 10 a.m. at the Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge. It'll start on the Iowa side at Tom Hannafin River's Edge Park. It's put on by the group Prevention Means Progress. It's part of National Recovery Month. Here again are the websites for the two recovery groups we mentioned this morning. IGotSober.com is Leo Allison's group. He started two years ago. Aaron Barnes is a sobriety coach. If you need him, you can email him, Aaron at SoberCoaching.com. Thanks, guys. Remember, if you missed any part of this show or you want to watch it again, it's online right now at KETV.com. Just go to our homepage and click on the menu button and look for Chronicle. I'm Julie Cornell. Thanks for watching. You leave, we leave you this morning with this piece from our chief photographer, Scott Buer. He shows us the beauty in all the rain that we recently experienced. <laughs>